And good afternoon. I welcome you to today's Trading Spotlight webinar here together with Admirals. It's Friday. It's the 25th of March, 2022. And I already see there's plenty of, of comments in the uh, chat box. Uh, hello. Let me just write down hello myself here so that everyone... Oh, uh, one second. No, let me just see. Uh, uh... So that, that looks uh, whether uh, probably this is this is another language. Um, not really sure. Uh, okay, now everything's fine. So uh, good afternoon. So this is where you can ask all your questions in the upcoming minutes. So yes, um, I um, I'm happy to be here today. And uh, today we wanna we wanna look at a very interesting topic. Um, we want to, in fact, uh, look at a topic which um, builds a little on uh, recent webinars we had together here. Um, so what we what we will do is uh, we want to find the right position size in our trading after having formulated several trading approaches. Um, that could be the DAX, that could be the S and P, that could be FX scalping breakout approaches. You probably remember. The webinar we had on EuroJPY, we had a, a seasonality um, a webinar for the DAX again, and um, now the question still is the same: um, What's the right position size given the edge we uh, found? Um, so the advantage we have with our strategy, and this is exactly what we want to dig deeper into today here. In fact, and um, we won't uh, use a strategy here. We um, uh, made a topic, but I will present you another very interesting um, strategy. One, uh, we also had a webinar about, well, I don't know, probably a year ago, probably one and a half year ago. Probably, um, if you want, we can, we can run this webinar again, uh, go through this in more detail. It's on gold, in fact. And uh, it's today. Um, today is the day um, where the strategy um, is um, um, in play, let's say, or where, where gold is hot for the strategy. So if you watch this uh, on, on YouTube now, please leave a thumb up here if you, if you enjoy what you will witness in the upcoming minutes. Um, uh, set up um, um, a reminder for the upcoming webinars we um, uh, hold for you here, not just me, but also my colleagues Paul and Marcus. Before that, subscribe to the YouTube channel. And um, if you have any questions, leave a comment, please um, leave a comment below the video. We'd be more than happy to, to answer your questions. And um, yeah, I think this is it around the um, introduction. Let's uh, jump right into the action here and uh, have, a, have a look here at the, at the uh, first slide. With your new trading strategy, what's the right position size? Um, and uh, so, given that, let me just see. Um, everything's fine, so everyone can hear me. That's nice. Uh, reposition size and is not tempting, and indeed, sometimes smart to load heavy at a solid turning point with a tight stop, especially when the anticipated move is to be large. Um, well, this is this is a, um, an interesting question. We will um, uh, go through this a little. Um, I'll look at it from another perspective. So, um, uh, first of all, I, I look at it from a, from a mathematical standpoint. Um, there are several ways how to load up, load the boat, or however you put this, um, uh, and and what's the right position size. First of all, it all comes down to your um, personality, uh, your your risk appetite. In fact, um, so or put it put it differently. Let's uh, let's assume uh, you you are someone who is willing to let's say maximum risk 100 euros, and you're not willing to risk 100 euros or 100 USD or GBP or whatever. Um, 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 that might be um, uh, that the currency unit you're using in your account, uh, but you just don't feel comfortable with this. It's like you 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 just feel um, 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 yeah uncomfortable. You, you just open the position and you just feel something does not feel right, um, and this results in emotional. Um, um, developments, let's say, and, and you get emotional in your trading, and this then may may result in you uh, doing bad decisions or, or making bad decisions, taking um, 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 trade bad trade decisions in this context, probably cutting winning trades short. Um, and so that being said, 
you can already see that that it depends a little on your risk appetite and your personality in this context. So loading the boat and saying, well, this makes sense, might make sense for you, might make sense for me, might not make sense for everyone because everyone is different in this context. And uh, so this is definitely something to keep in mind all, the whole time, also for for today's presentation. But I'll give you um, a first step, let's say, a mathematical formula you can use in your trading. And the great thing about this is. Um, it's not just that you can take the formula and then uh, use it for your own trading, but it's necessary that you know exactly the key parameters, as we pointed out in the um, recent webinars, that you really know um, what are the key parameters of your strategy. That might say, for example, something about your hit rate, about the payoff ratio, and therefore uh, you have to have a clear trading strategy. If you don't have this, well, you can't use the formula, which is then forcing you to think about your edge, your strategy before you start trading, in fact. And I think this is, by the way, one of the reasons I'm um, after all this, um, um, all, all the years uh, in this industry, I'm not just as a trader myself, as someone giving presentations and holding webinars and seminars, but also um, acting as a, as a mentor for, for traders. Um, many just don't know what their edge is. And, and this is, in fact, the main issue why longer run they will uh, lose money trading uh, the markets. But before we look at everything, um, and you see, I have plenty to say about this topic. Um, first of all, I'd like to introduce um, Admirals to you, the broker behind this, making all this possible. So within this industry for over 20 years now, um, and fully regulated um, regulations um, around the globe, ASIC, SISEC, uh, SISEC um, FCA in the UK, for example, um, very competitive offering when it comes to spreads. That's not just true for the DAX. Um, so over here in Germany, for example, usually we refer to Admirals as the DAX expert. So usually if, if we talk with each other, there's someone coming to you and saying, hey, um, what, what is um, um, the best broker? Put this in quotation mark, whatever best might be for you in this case. But um, and, um, let's say pricing wise or execution wise or spread wise, um, wh who could you, could you um, 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 recommend here. Usually um, when talking to whoever trader you might talk to, uh, Admirals usually is among uh, the top rated brokers due to their highly competitive offering when it comes to the spread, but also to order execution speed um, and platform reliability. I just read a question. I haven't read it in, in depth, but the question on the on the platform. Um, so MetaTrader, for example, is one of the uh, most used trading platforms most some people might say, well, a little um, um, rusty, let's say. So um, it's I'm I'm not really sure whether this is um, um, a good way to put it. I think it's fully um, or very interesting for um, automated strategies, especially. That was the main intention um, once uh, this this MetaTrader um, platform was established. Um, and when looking at Admirals, then um, you can find plenty of um, 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 offerings in terms of software solutions, like the Supreme Add-on, for example but also in addition to that, the stereo trader, which can make uh, the meta trader, even though it's mainly focusing on um, um, automated trading strategies here in this context, um, um, a highly professional um, discretionary trading platform. Um, given all that, give um, admiralmarkets.com a look and um, uh, visit the website. If you have, plan uh, if you have questions, ask them, send them over. That's one of the other very important aspects I'd like to mention here, One World, One Broker. So Admirals has offices around the globe. That means uh, you have a high chance to talk to someone in your native language in this context. I think especially when it comes to money, questions about account opening um, um, a procedure, everything, um, you, you just prefer to talk to someone in your native language. I worked in a bank as a, as a trainee. It's 20 years ago, but still, um, when I talk to people um, who were in German and who aren't um, a native um, German speakers, uh, they, they, they prefer to talk to someone in their native language. Um, and, and there was a, another level of trust just. Um, um, and uh, said that, just um, um, shoot out an email or send, um, also call um, Admirals and, and, and ask your questions there. Have a high chance that you talk to someone, you can talk to someone who's um, in, in your native language. So that's around it. Um, around the introduction. Let's have a look at today's agenda and then uh, go through this. So a quick glance at the three columns of profitable trading. The great question um, we already received at the beginning um, around trading psychology covers this in fact. 
And uh, this is bringing us then to the, to the second point here, the interaction of the three columns with each other. Um, then there you can already see it, the Kelly formula will come into play then, um, the mathematical approach here, um, where you, you then have a chance to, to really f calculate the um, um, optimal position size. And it's um, a classic mathematical um, 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 approach. In fact, um, sometimes I have to, to smile a little because um, every time I talk about uh, this, this, this um, um, topic here, Kelly, I usually um, have to think about uh, Sheldon Cooper. You probably have heard about him. Um, this is the guy from the Big Bang Theory. And um, so why, why I have to think about him, we will, we will uh, see that here in the, in the upcoming um, um, minutes because he's looking at it from a purely technical standpoint where we will likely look at it and not from a risk perspective um, uh, look at it. And um, then I will also show you certainly, and this is why, why well, what this, this webinar is about, how to use this formula in your trading. So first of all, let's start. Um, by the way, let me just check here. Yes, um, yeah, this is, this is in fact true. Um, uh, Meta quotes, um, so the, the company behind this is um, uh, designed by a Russian company. I think this is um, also true. I'm, I, I think, um, or at least that was something I learned when I went to school, respectively to university where I studied mathematics. Um, it was very interesting to see that especially Russian people um, have just a, a knack for for automated trading. So this is this is really interesting, and 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 they really um, know their stuff there. So um, 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 in, in in terms of programming and everything, I think it's not a big surprise that um, uh, Meta quotes um, has its roots um, in Russia. Let's say, um, but this is just um, 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 something. Uh, okay, I think this is we answered this. Okay, um, so this is just for for um, uh, um, 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 the people. I, I don't know. So um, uh, uh, Jeff uh, Jeff Buren asks me. Um, I think you're from the Netherlands. Most likely, who's the owner now? I have no clue. I have no idea. So I'm not that deep in that matter. I just know uh, that I'm, I'm, I'm all in all a meta trader is still um, um, available at least, and, and we are we are capable of trading with it. And um, especially the the algo traders might really li um, well like this. But let's have a look at the three columns of uh, profitable trading. So. I, I think it comes uh, with no surprise that um, one of the columns is risk and money management. The second is trading psychology. Um, and the third is trading with an edge. And uh, it all comes down to the three columns of profitable trading in this context. So this is no big surprise. In fact, um, certainly you can now ask, okay, but well, isn't it necessary, let's say, to be an expert in technical analysis analysis, respectively and, and, and when it comes to fundamentals or something like that? Well, um, I think um, we could also add this somehow um, um, to this to this um, um, construct here. Even though I'd say technical analysis, respectively, um, um, also fundamentals, somehow it's um, included here trading uh, a trading strategy with an edge. So in my case, for example. Um, even if I if I trade like um, today, so there's there's two um, um, stocks I, I'm currently watching. Um, let's see how, how things play out. I just hope that um, I'm not that excited because I'm. Uh, you probably have seen that that um, um, due to the um, 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 summer uh, time, we are now starting U.S. markets um, or we see U.S. markets opening one hour earlier than usual, and then on Monday we are back to in, in German time uh, three thirty. So today it's two thirty. Um, and the last 30 minutes before I started the webinar, I was trading, in fact, I was trading uh, Tilray. So this is a fund changing fundamental trades. Um, so uh, the news here was that um, there is some, some, some uh, um, um, discussions taking place. Um, in term or around um, the so-called, let me just um, um, look this up, marijuana opportunity reinvestment and expungement act next week so um that um um um, um bill here had um, some some trouble um uh, crossing the u.s senate and now it's reviewed again um act, or acting as a as, as as fuel let's say um for for people um looking looking here for a legalization of uh, cannabis in this case or marijuana um and thus the stock tilray 
for example, is um, massively um, um, a plate right now. So we already saw nearly 20 million shares being traded in the pre-market and, and average trading daily trading volume is somewhere around 23 million. So nearly um, 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 the average daily trading volume was done pre-market. And um, so right now we're trading around eight, or at least we traded around eight when I, when I looked the stock up. Unfortunately, there was no real push from eight higher um, um, here. But still, so the stock is hot today. So it's a potential, let's call it changing fundamental straight. Um, and this is what's resulting um, or adding or making the stock hot for me. Um, and, and in combination with my strategy, this is um, um, a must so that I use the strategy and trade with the strategy then from a discretionary perspective. So that's why I, I'd like to include this here, the technical respective fundamental side into the, the third column around trading strategy with an edge. It's probably a question which, which um, um, you might come across, but coming back to the, the presentation today. So we have those three columns. And now the interesting thing is, let's assume you're an expert on, let's say a risk and money management, or you have a highly profitable tra tra training strategy. So you really know what you're doing. Um, 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 and you understand the fundamentals, you, you understand the technicals, you're capable of, of really um, 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 drawing support resistance zones, which um, um, make sense. Um, but at the end of the day, you're, let's say, not capable of um, pushing the button. So you're, you're not capable of executing. You're too hesitant to, to execute on your trade. Um, given, well, or in this context, we, we only look at um, um, not being capable of executing. It's not about um, um, how much size um, you enter the market with. You probably have even um, trouble enter the market due to, or with, with a, with a um, 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 small position size, because uh, you just can't stand to, to wake up on the, on the, on the wrong side um, of a trade. So it's an ego question, let's say. So we we are in the middle um, here of this um, construct trading psychology. So that being said, you can be um, uh, the best risk money manager in this context, really um, um, understand statistics and how much to risk with the trade. You, you can really know the fundamentals, technicals of a, of a trade, um, have a strategy with an edge. Usually you should be confident, but if you can't execute on your edge, well, you won't be profitable in your trading, obviously. The same is true for the other columns um, as well. So some people are mentally, um, um, let's say strong as a rock. Uh, they, they really can um, um, withstand any financial pressure, let's say, that which might arose from a market moving against them. Um, but still, they just don't know what they're doing. So it's just like, um, uh, let's put it simply, they have the balls to execute and they say, well, let's go. Um, but they don't know what they're doing. So obviously, also here, then, um, that, that, that will um, result in, in, in difficulty difficulties when it comes to profitability in your overall trading. So that being said, brings us here to the interaction the next slide, the interaction of the three columns with each other. So um, I only um, um, uh, here uh, pointed out the, um, 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 I pointed out here the parameters, risk management and trading psychology to just let play these two with each other and um, adding to the overall value of today's presentation and today's topic here. So Let's assume you have an inadequate position size that mentally um, affects you naturally because you say um, once your position size is too big, you get affected here um, by the position size, by the PL. You look up, um, it's, it's not about executing um, uh, not just um, 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 correctly anymore, but it's also about um, um, not, not, the, not the right decisions you, you want to take, but it's just like you, you're risking just too much money um, and thus you say, well, if I cut the winning trade short, PL wise at least, I have enough money made, let's say, to uh, pay the bills for one week, assume the following. Um, but it's not only that, that if we're too big in a position, the market moves in our direction. But on the other hand, it probably moves against us. Once it moves against us, we are taking out the stop and say, well, I just, I think I'm right. And that's why I can take out the stop because the market will turn around rather sooner or later. And thus, um, I'm, I'm meaning nothing more than here, than, than, than um, 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 I can, I can, I can withstand the current pressure uh, the position moving against me has on me. That's what I tell myself. Um, in fact, I'm not capable of taking out the trade for one simple reason, because it would realize a too big loss 
um, and, and the loss, which would then potentially mentally break me. Um, and I probably would have trouble to regain confidence, respectively, make the money back somehow in the past because the loss is so great that I just um, stand there completely uh, paralyzed and, and not capable of executing anymore. So um, that being said, obviously underlines um, how risk money management and trading psychology here um, interact with each other. And now um, we come to the, let's call them, uh, let, let's call it the, the, the Sheldon Cooper slide. Um, so how to find the right position size? And what has this to do with, with Sheldon Cooper? Um, so, so the character from Big Bang Theory, I think um, we all know this, this, this guy. If not, okay, that's not, not, not the issue. You can see I have no picture from this guy here. It's just the person I have to think about. Um, and, and I will tell you now why. Because, um, well, what we know is that the right position size has to make sure two things. First of all, it should keep potential drawdowns small. So this is, in fact, the column or respect, respectively the bullet point here, which we usually look at once we talk about trading, once we talk about entering the market, usually um, 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 here people, mentors, traders, whoever you listen to, um, um, say, well, keep your um, losses small, work with a stop, um, don't risk too much money when entering the market. So, and everything, and, and every word here is 100% correct. But, and this is the thing, um, we sometimes forget that the optimal position size should also make sure that we see an optimal growth of our equity curve. So, or put it differently. Um, so, well, we, I think we all agree that um, trading in general is very, very stressful. And we all agree that there is lots of pain connected trading the markets. So um, we, we sometimes work hours to prepare for the trading day. We um, um, work out every detail, lots of research. We work over the weekend and then we enter and the market moves against us. So everything might be completely correct. So the strategy has an edge. Um, um, our, our picture, we, we, we uh, just researched is, is, is perfectly fine. The levels we were looking at, great. And then we just get flushed out for, I don't know, someone else um, I'm having some kind of a fat finger. So this is in fact something I could live with. So let me put this um, um, differently. Last weekend, for example, I um, worked on this trading week already, and I, I um, was looking at the Chinese stocks. So the other stocks, by the way, not just Tilray, I just traded before I um, 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 started the webinar here, but the other stock I have on my on my radar is NEO right now. I think we dropped 20, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yesterday, after hours, um, there was um, um, uh, news being released, respectively earnings release, and the guidance for Q1 wasn't as good um, as it should have been. And given the fact that China Chinese stocks in general, and here we're talking about NEO, but we could also look at VABA, for example, or JD, or we could look at Lee, um, direct competitor from NEO, or XPath. There's another company, um, PDD, then Pin, 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 Pin Duo, Duo, I think. This is um, the, the funny thing is that PDD was uh, the most profitable trade of the week uh, on Monday, but I, I just refer to the stock as PDD. Um, and so this is the company we will look at in a, in a few seconds. And um, so I worked over the weekend and um, I was formulating a, a thesis where I said, well, I think we went uh, where we, we saw a corrective move was just a little overextended. And I could imagine now um, the stocks here, Chinese stocks pulling in. And thus I had a, a short um, a bias in this case for PDD. PDD came out with um, um, earnings Monday morning um, pre-market. And then, um, we saw a pop higher, but, um, it topped out against 46 long thing short. I shorted based on the work I put in over the weekend. Um, I, I, I had a set up formulated uh, for Baba, but I adapted the game plan then for PDD in this context. Um, I made a nice profit and I made not enough money. I just didn't make enough money because I executed flawlessly, um, 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 not, not flawlessly that way around. So um, I made a mistake. And that's probably the, the, the most horrible thing which could happen. So you make money, you should be really happy about what you did and you made a mistake and you made not enough. Um, and so the pain which is connected with this, coming back to today's presentation, the pain which is connected with this, 
Um, this is something where you say, well, if I'm in the right play, the right asset, right stock, right index, right, um, I don't know, commodity, whatever, currency pair, um, I want to see my capital grow optimal. So I want to make the most money out of this to pay me for all the pain and everything which um, um, trading is not worth, of, uh, why trading is just not worth it. So, um, um, and, and we want to get the biggest bang for our buck. But we usually don't look at it uh, from this perspective because we, we think um, it, it has to do with discipline and, and, and discipline and, and, and thus we should focus on um, not risking too much respectively, um, 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 cutting the position size um, um, to a level where we feel comfortable we do not um, um, exit our, let's call it comfort zone here. And thus we don't focus on um, increasing the position size to a level to get based on the edge we have to get the most optimal growth of our equity curve. And that being said, um, is something um, um, which wouldn't happen to someone like Sheldon Cooper, because he would look at this and just say, well, nice um, about drawdowns, losing money, but I look at it from a mathematical um, standpoint in this context, and there's a formula, and I just execute on the formula. Um, and if the formula tells me, given my edge, my strategy, well, risk, let's say, 5% of the equity, let's say you have 10,000 euro account and, and risk um, 500 bucks on this trade. Well, I just do it. Usually you wouldn't read about this um, um, in a, or at a broker, let's say, or in a book or wherever, um, where you want to get educated on trading because risking to 5% of your equity is just too much. Um, from a mathematical standpoint, it can make perfect sense to risk 5% of your equity. Um, and I will show you how this is done. And um, I think, well, what we want to do, even though I will, I will, um, 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 I will, I will, I make sure that, that we also focus on the first bullet point. First of all, we want to focus on the second point here. So we want to really look at how can we grow our equity um, as comfortable, comfortable, respectively, as aggressive, as optimal as possible, completely ignoring potential drawdowns and, and setbacks in our equity, just thinking that we are like robots and, and could execute on the edge we have, given um, um, a certain amount of money risking each time, and thus seeing getting the biggest bang for our buck here. And what we will use here is then the so-called Kelly criterion. So because Kelly is um, answering exactly that question, how can I create the optimal growth of my equity curve if I know certain parameters of my trading strategy? And you have to know these parameters, but then Kelly is probably the way to go here in your um, 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 trading. Let me just, um, by the way, uh, let me just see if I missed the question here. Yes, I think this is this is also a main concept, which is also um, underlying um, or underlining here um, why trading is so um, different from uh, what what we what we are used to or why you can sometimes um, um, read things like uh, traders are like um, psychopaths or something like that sometimes I have to smile about this but I know what what this is um, um, what this is about why why people especially those not knowing what they're talking about mostly journalists are writing an article and and, and just um, um, writing an article writing an article also online and to get the most clicks you have to to have a headline which is just catchy and if um, um, you're, you're, you're saying, well, a trader XYZ, fund manager like Paul Tudor Jones, whoever, um, uh, has the same character traits like a, like a psychopath, um, well, this is most likely giving you the click. Um, even though, coming here to, to your comment, so um, only being, let's say, 40% right of the time, and the usual um, um, human tendency is we want to be right, not just most of the time, but all the time. 
um, every discussion, you want to come out ahead. I mean, this also depends a little on your character, but especially uh, discussions, I think, over the last, let's say, two, two and a half years. I think it started already um, around Brexit in 2016, it started, it continued over um, the election with Donald Trump. Um, I think discussions around certain topics got heated very, very quickly. And there's no kind of a culture when, when talking, discussion, discussing with each other, but we are all aware that we want to be right all the time. Um, and this is completely human. If you're that kind of character, you will have trouble trading the markets, especially profitable. So um, because most of the time you will just be wrong and cut your losing trade short, except when you're wrong, is just the way to go. Even though you can be, as you write, like Richard Dennis from the, from the Turtle Traders, uh, you can be hugely net positive in your trading if you're capable of not just cutting your losing trade short, but also letting your winning trades run and risk enough here. Um, and then you can also just have a hit rate of, let's say, 30%, probably 40%. But this is completely, uh, this is enough here to, to um, um, uh, turn the tide and make you profitable in the long run. And um, Yes, exactly. I, I think this is also, I'm, I'm, I'm here, a very, very um, a good parallel. So Vincenzo just wrote, just like in poker, there will be highs and lows, but the skilled player comes out um, um, a winner at the end because he's um, looking at um, um, working with a so-called positive expectancy in his trading. And he tries to big bet or bet big once he has an advantage. He knows, let's say, he has the nuts, stone cold nuts, and he really tries to suck in the um, 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 the opponent here, thinking he has the best hand, um, playing some kind of a weakness, however that might look. So, for example, I mean, I really re remember um, um, a story when I was um, playing poker. Um, so my wife and I, we met at a poker table. And um, so there was a guy I was uh, playing against, and um, I had a, a very, let's say, um, marginal hand pre-flop. And then I flopped uh, a nut, um, um, not not flush, um, um, uh, um, a straight flush draw, um, and I, I hit the straight here with the flush not coming um, at the end. And then I overbet the pot at the end um, massively. I overbet the pot massively and sucked him in with top pair, top kicker in this position with me paying out um, um, decently. So the implied odds played for me in this context. So, and this is exactly where trading comes into play because you see once you have the edge and then you go big, you, you increase the size and you let the market here pay you for all the work you, you just put in. And again, so uh, that the formula here um, um, is, is um, uh, the, the let's let's say the, the fundament of this concept. Um, I think I, I, I think I have to continue because I, I just look at the, the, the time here. So we have ten minutes, and I have I have still I have the strategy to 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 uh, present to you. So let me just get you here through um, 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 the idea behind. This. So the this is a, an adopted Kelly criterion. I don't tell you the story behind this now. Um, what's the story behind Kelly? Um, it in fact um, found its its way in the world of trading in the 1960s with a guy called Ed Thorpe. Um, and he's a mathematician. So, um, um, and he had a colleague back then. His name was John Kelly. And John Kelly was working um, here on a project where he was um, looking to, to um, find um, a way to calculate the optimal position size in casino games. And Thorpe, back then, this is not just the guy who wrote the book Beat the Market. Um, Ed Thorpe is also um, a trader who was once featured, respectively interviewed from Jack Schwager in Hedge Fund Market Wizards, but also um, he started out um, as a card counter in blackjack. And there he was um, asking the questions after finding a, um, a potential advantage he could exploit and take money out of the casinos. It wasn't just, I want to make money, but I want to make the most money possible here. And here, therefore, he was looking for a formula. And then he found out that John Kelly was working on such a project. The thing is that the, um, um, let's call it the casino beating uh, formula uh, they were working with here needed an, an adaptation here. And this is exactly the formula you can find here. So you have the hit rate of your strategy, and then you subtract the loss rate divided by the so-called payoff ratio. So the payoff ratio is the average winning trade um, um, compared to the average losing trade or in, in relation to the average losing trade. So let's assume here we have a hit rate of, let's say, 40% of our trading, but we're making on average three times more when we win um, than when we lose. 
which means that the payoff ratio is three then, which means that given the formula here, you have an optimal position size of 40% and you subtract 60%, the losing trade, uh, where the, the, the loss rate here, you divide it by three, and then you should risk 20% of your equity per trade because this is giving you the optimal growth. Just imagine that. So purely mathematical speaking, um, you should risk 20% of your equity. 10,000 euro account, you have a strategy giving you these um, parameters here, you should risk 20%. Given that, um, we can run a Monte Carlo simulation, you will see that you will um, draw down something like 99.9%. .9%, so nearly busting the account all the time. Um, so obviously this needs adaptation, but purely mathematical speaking, mathematically speaking here, you should be really, um, um, uh, um, um, yeah, interested, in fact, in, in, in using this strategy in your trading because um, it increases, obviously, the profitability of your overall approach massively. And the interesting thing is, while I now said that you will bust the account, um, mathematically speaking, um, you will never go broke using this formula, in fact, because um, let's assume you lose 20% of your equity. That means that in your strategy, the loss rate here will increase, which will mean that you will have to decrease your position size in the next step once you trade um, 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 the strategy once again, because then the, the hit rate is lower than 40%, which means you will have to risk less than that. And this continues till you finally have a winner again. But in our case, we're working with leveraged products. That being said, will leave us here with, first of all, um, um, the problem that we will over leverage our positions. Plus, we also have to pay commissions when trading FX, for example, when trading stocks. So um, if you do not have enough money to pay these commissions, you can trade with a broker. OK, so that's that's also something to keep in mind here. So that being said, it's purely theoretical. But I um, worked out something here in terms of how to optimize this um, and, and also still get um, 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 a respectable, let's say, a bang for the buck. Um, and I used here some thoughts from this guy I just mentioned at Thorpe. Um, uh, from 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 his interview. So I highly recommend um, this book. I'm not really sure whether this is still available, but um, um, look it up in, at, at, at Amazon. So it's Hedge Fund Market Wizards. So that's the book. It's Schwager, um, Jack Schwager, who's running these interviews. And um, there he mentioned something when I read the interview. That's 10 years ago, something like that. Um, and I, I read something which, which I um, found fascinating because what he said was, well, um, I, I'm, I'm sometimes really careful in trading Kelly. I use it in my trading, but by the way, it's not just um, um, uh, at Thorpe as a highly successful hedge fund trader using this, but also, for example, guys like Jim Simons, um, the uh, founder of Renaissance, and Renaissance, Rentec. <laughs> so this is a short version. So the most profitable and uh, successful hedge fund of our time, most profitable. Um, and also Warren Buffett is using um, uh, here an adaptation of Kelly in his trading to find out what's the optimal position size. So you, you shouldn't underestimate this concept, in fact. And um, so what um, Thorpe said was, well, if I trade Kelly, I take half of Kelly because um, this is giving me only 50% of the um, volatility in my equity curve, but still I get um, here 75% um, um, of, the, of the optimal capital growth when using only 50%. What does this mean? Well, let's assume we have a system which has um, um, 30% hit rate and a payoff ratio of three to one. So I reduced this um, so we, that we don't work with 20%. Um, but if we put in these parameters here in our formula, you see uh, that you have 30% subtracted 70% divided by three, and then you have 70% of your equity you should risk. Um, so 7% is heavy, especially if you only have a hit rate of seven, uh, um, um, 30% in this context. But now what Thorpe does is he divides 7% by two. Um, so in this context, or he cuts the account in half, it doesn't matter whether you, you cut the position size in half or the account in half, it comes down to the same. Um, so that means that you're only risking 3.5%. And here, you're not getting the optimal growth of your QT curve anymore, but still 75% while reducing the position at where the, 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 the volatility in the equity curve here by, by um, 50%. So that's one way to put it. Um, I 
also go one step further, um, even though I'm, I'm then also not getting the optimal growth anymore, um, but I, um, I take the square root out of, of, in this case here, three and a half, which brings me down to something like 1.8, 1.9%. And also I only trade part of my trading capital that way. But um, that's something probably of interest. Um, that was one of the uh, starting points of one Okay, I well, this is something like years ago, um, but um, 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 an asset management I was I was running here, and there was some 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 people interested in this. So not clients, but but brokers who who asked me whether I'd be um, or I'd be interested in running this um, um, solution for them. So um, um, it, it it didn't go any further. So this years ago, but um, still I was using uh, a, an, um, um, an adaptation of the Kelly criterion here in my um in my account part of my account so it was just a small one but still um um let's say um interesting enough for um, um uh, for people to say well this looks still quite um, promising not just trading wise but also position um, 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 um sizing wise and um so now let's uh, recall by the way recall the goal strategy i think we had this already recall means we we once had a webinar on this um, um, on the strategy, but um, yeah. So what what we did back then, um, we could do the same now with the DAX. We could do the same for the S and P five hundred here. Um, so we, we remember what we do is we buy gold into the weekend. Uh, so in fact, we buy gold every Thursday at the closing price here at uh, nine uh, fifty nine London here in this case UK time. And then we sell the position um, the Friday before we close. So we don't take the position over the weekend here. Um, but what we do is, in fact, we anticipate that there's some kind of, let's say, a risk aversion taking place into the weekly close because market participants want to be hatched over the weekend. So they probably don't want to sell their current um, equity exposure, but still they'd like to be prepared if there's, let's say, some kind of escalation. Right now, especially, you probably have seen um, um, uh, the developments here. SWIFT, um, for example, um, 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 exclusion from Russia, for example, uh, the oil embargo over the weekend. So that happened over the weekend. Sometimes uh, you, you will see this, um, um, that you get stronger moves then. But you can also see this development here and this um, willingness to hatch into the weekend. Um, then if you look here at, at, at parameters um, into the weekly close, and if you, if, you, if you work with these parameters then, so buying every Thursday, holding the position over the Friday, closing before the weekend, you're working not with a stop loss. Obviously, that needs adaptation. So, because I don't want to work with a stop loss here in this context, um, the good thing is we are not looking at a penny stock. We're looking at the gold market. So, this is some highly liquid, but still, not working with a stop is usually not a good way to go. Still, as a strategy we want to use here for for our purposes, we also have no take profit. And some of you probably might recall um, here these parameters. So, the time span we looked at was January two thousand and and and, and three till February 2020. So that was a webinar long, long, long ago. Um, and what we did was, um, I think we, we um, programmed it via Python. I think that was what I, what I presented here. So we didn't use MQL here. And here, these were the trades. So you see um, plenty of trades. I mean, 70 years, every Friday, you get 888 trades. You have a hit rate of 57%. Uh, you have a payoff ratio slightly better uh, than one, in fact, one um, um, point one to one here with a max DD, max drawdown from 18.6% and a very impressive um, 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 equity curve. So very, very simple strategy. Um, this is no rocket science. You just buy closing price on the Thursday, you sell closing price on the Friday. That's it. Um, you, you buy, in this case, gold, and you use uh, the idea behind this that market participants want to hedge over the weekends here. But beside of that, it's not just hedging, but it's also probably um, um, that, that a physical gold dealers, for example, want to buy gold already, which they get delivered at the beginning of the next week, then they can work with jewelers um, and so on and so forth. But in our case, what we are of uh, what is of interest for us here is the hit rate, respectively the payoff ratio, which we now want to put into um, here the Monte Carlo simulation uh, simulator. So the, the one which I presented to you also in a webinar earlier, and you can see here, you can see here, there's a top which calls, um, which, which, which reads Cali in this case. So which means um, 
if you put now these parameters here, so the hit rate of 57%, um, and then um, 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 the payoff ratio of 1.088 into the um, um, Monte Carlo simulator here, you get a quite impressive um, um, sum or, or um, 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 a collection here of equities, uh, equity curves in this case. So by the way, the, the simulator, um, you can find it on the, the web page of my book. So um, it's a German book, so it does make sense for, for probably you here to, 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 to um, um, work with this or to promote it or something like that. It's a German book. But um, um, the simulator here, you can play a little with this. And, and by the way, this is exactly what we wanna do here. Let me just have a look. So let me just open it here, Trader. And then what we want to do is I want to show you what happens once we use Kelly. Oh, there we go. So this is the website. It's a German website. And here is the Monte Carlo simulator. OK. Um, and so we take a 10,000 euro account. We had a 57% hit rate. We look at 500 trades of problems. 1,000, why not? Uh, yeah. And the payoff ratio is 088. And then you recall here in the presentation, 70%. So that means we now want to risk 70% of our equity for the trade. Because this is what Kelly tells us. You can see it here. Well. Um, what, what, what do we get to see? A very impressive move, which brings us uh, the title richest person in the world. Um, but you can also see that the biggest max DD in this context is 99%. So you can run this plenty several times. And obviously, it just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense to, to, to risk 70% per trade. Um, you can see 99% drawdown. So you're crushing the account if you don't um, um, uh, take any any adaptations of the strategy, um, respectively here in terms of, of um, 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 Kelly. What we certainly will do is now, even though it won't help out dramatically, but what we can do is we risk 8.5%. So cutting this in half, this is now bringing us a quite impressive um, um, performance here. So let me just see. Oh, no, I said I, I was a little irritated. So just a drawdown of 8.5. Yeah, because there was a dot before. So now, now things are getting a little more realistic. So you can see here 78%, um, 90, 83%. So we come down drawdown wise, but still way above 80%. This is not professional trading. So this is like um, um, really going for uh, the biggest bang for the buck. Um, and, and that being said, brings us here to the point where um, we will now find a conclusion because we will say, well, okay, then it's interesting to know that, but how can this suit um, my overall profitability? What can I do with this? Does it make sense to use Kelly to calculate Kelly here in this context? Um, in fact, it does. And uh, this is where we now come to the summary of today's presentation. So the Kelly criterion is giving you the chance to find, first of all, that, 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 that's what Kelly is about, to find the position size, the optimal position size for an optimal growth of your equity curve while ignoring potential drawdowns. As a professional trader, we can't ignore drawdowns, sure enough. But first of all, if you use Kelly, then it does not mean that you get a better performance. That's something you have to understand. Then, because especially when you trade with leverage products and, and pushing the envelope here too far, um, you will probably face massive drawdowns after we've seen in the simulation and potentially kill your account. So long thing short, but still, um, still Kelly, and this is the last point. So the, the, the potential solution is something um, um, I already um, um, tried to show you, cutting the position size in half, respectively taking out um, or I'm um, um, taking the square root here and only risking only, but still it's um, a massive. If you risk 1.8 to 2% here in your account, um, you only um, 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 trade part of your trading capital with Kelly 
And in addition to that, you reduce the part um, 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 you're risking your per position. So this is the solution you will you will um, 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 have to do if you don't want to kill this part of your of your trading account. But still, you can um, take plenty of information out of this presentation and out of Cali in general because it perfectly shows you. It underlines and and puts um, 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 here bold letters um, to the fact that you have to have a trading strategy. Because I think even if I now um, um, emphasized that you could kill part of your account with trading this and it's too big to risk, let's say, 70% of your equity, um, you, you're just um, impressed by this. I, I know this because I myself look at this and I'm just fascinated. Um, and you think, well, let's just try Let's just try. Probably I can find a way to um, use this knowledge here to my advantage in my trading, given my strategy, um, and then take it from there. Trade part of my capital with Kelly, whatever it might um, be at the end. But in the long run, that seems to make sense to give me kind of, a, let's call it a performance booster. But it all comes down to, you have to know what you're doing. And you only know what you're doing if you know key parameters of your trading strategy. So if you don't have a positive expectancy with your S and with your strategy, well, you will find trouble using Kelly because Kelly needs these parameters. Hit rate, Kelly needs parameters like um, a payoff ratio, and you only know this if you worked heavily on finding out these key parameters of your of your of your strategy, and this is bringing you an enormous advantage compared to many other traders who just jump um, into the water and and just try to trade the markets going long, going short without really knowing their edge, and and that alone um, gives you gives you an idea why it's worth it to. Um, be an expert, also be an expert on how to calculate position size correctly from a mathematical standpoint, even though in the basic version, the position size might be way too high at the beginning. And um, yeah, that's it for today. Let me just, I'm um, here while I, let me just here, I'm um, go through the questions now while you get all the information on how to contact here directly with um, um, Admirals, email address, um, also YouTube channel, and so on and so forth. Let me just see. Okay. Uh, um, okay. Yes. Um, I'd recommend uh, at Jimton uh, to to send an email um, here directly to to admirals with questions. Um, so that's probably the good way to do that, or post them directly below the video. Um, so right now we, we don't um, um, offer something like a private coachings or something like that. Um, but I think we um, uh, we're, we're probably thinking about this somehow um, um, uh, here, bringing something to life like a forum where we can interact with each other. Probably that makes sense. If you're interested in that, please shoot an email over to Admirals um, uh, that you yet that you'd be interested in. That that also goes for all the other people. Um, um, who might now say, well, that would be nice to, to discuss here, not just setups and, and what's currently hot, and, and, but also um, how to, to um, uh, manage positions like where get, 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 in, get, a, get a place where you can um, 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 talk to others and hold you accountable um, to what you're doing. I mean, just imagine you, you enter the market and you probably say, well, I take up the stop now. Well, you can do this because it's your account and it's um, your um, um, trading here, and, and no one knows what you're doing there because you're sitting in your in your in front of your laptop completely alone. But if you talk to other people here and let them know, hey, I just entered the market and here's my stop. This is my target. That's my my idea behind this. Um, you have a higher chance of keeping the stop um, in place because if you take out the stop and there's someone, and there will be someone asking you, hey, how's your trade going? So usually you, you have to be stopped out now and you're sitting there just thinking, hmm, 
yeah, I, I should have been stopped out, but I think the market will turn around. I took the stop out. So this is what I talk about when it comes to accountability. Um, if you're interested in that, feel free to, to shoot an email. Um, I'd be more than happy to, to, to work on such a project with you. Fully regulated broker, risk all the time. Be aware of it. Um, please read carefully. And um, yeah, made a lot of fun today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, you enjoyed listening to me as much as it made fun for me to present to you here at the input and uh, talk to you again next week. Have a nice weekend. Enjoy yourself. See you. Bye-bye.